Ralph Mayhew here. Um, I am going to do a little bit of a challenge today. A friend of mine gave me this. Um, this is what is otherwise known as a prehistoric camera. Uh, it's a totally manual camera uh, made by Pentax. I am going to use this camera over the next 24 days to take an exposure, a picture, an image a day that captures what that day was like and then I'm going to send the film away, get the film back and show you the images as a way of saying uh, let's have a play with some manual photography. Now obviously this video is being made today and then the last part of this video is being made in like a month's time. Uh, so there'll be a little bit of lag between the two but for you it'll be like that. And that's where we're headed. How about I just show you how you put some film in it, how it all comes together and then you can see the images that I've taken over the next slash last 24 days. Got the shutter, wind, it's got a timer here. ISO is set to 400 already, set by the film. Oops, see through just there, it says 400. Shutter speed here, aperture here, go time here. Let's see how we go. took this bad boy out, put some of this stuff in it. So this video won't bore you to death with any commentary and all those photos. As you see, and there's one there that you'll be like, what on earth? And I was like, what on earth? It's just all kind of white. I put up the original and I put up an edited. You will see that they're not raw. That means you can't affect much of the highlights or much of the shadows. You're really limited in the editing you can do. I had them processed through Shibui, and Shibui is a local film uh, processing place. Basically, you chuck your film in an envelope, you drop your envelope off, and they send you, in a couple of days' time, the digitals of your thing. I want to talk about what I learned from the process, what I learnt, learned, learnt from the process, what I gained, discovered about this uh, beautiful ancient art that has been superseded by digital. I found that you value each time you press this shutter. There's no do-overs, you don't get another chance. You gotta get the one photo right and therefore each photo seems to feel like it's more important or more valuable than when you just pick up your phone and go or you got your DSLR and you're with this you're like oh one shot because I've only got 24 of these to go so you value each shot more you still have to use and apply your skill 
to it. It's still a camera. It works the same way as a camera. So you have to understand light. You have to understand light balance and aperture and depth of field. You have to understand how long you want the shutter to be open for. You have to understand how to get focus on what you want to focus on. So still need to apply your skill. With focus, one of the fascinating and cool things is, once you lock in your focus, which you do manually, right? There is no autofocus. So you lock it in like this that I've shown in previous videos. I'll just give you a bit of a there. You can go and have a look at it. Um, they, once you've locked it in focus, you don't need to worry about it. It's, it's there. You could quite effectively take a selfie by working out how far away you can your arm length is and then just finding something the same length away and just focusing it and then you're good to go which is a really stupid analogy because you're not going to waste a selfie on this. And next thought is you have to think a lot before shooting. You really enter into the process. It slows you down. With digital, I think you th I think that you think generically, not you personally, but maybe us, we think as we shoot. So you shoot and then you readapt and you shoot and you recompose and you shoot and you change your settings. With with these, you've got to do all those things before you take your first shot and you realize with your first shot that that's probably going to be it. One of the photos you'll see is when I was composing of this beautiful cockatoo and I had it right down like that and my son did a car noise. I happened to be standing in the middle of the road at the time. My son did a car noise and I thought I was going to get killed by a car as, as I pressed the button. So this is the battery doesn't go flat. I think this battery has been in here for maybe maybe 300 years. I don't know, a long time, right? You don't need to worry about batteries. You don't need to worry about turning up with um, your battery that flashes red and you realize your other ones are flat or you didn't bring them with you. Here's your memory card. You're pretty um, cluey about where they are because it's huge. And you've got a little number here which tells you how um, how long you're going ahead. You usually get 26 out of 24. Um, I got I got 26 and I just ditched two of them. One because I was trying to work out the camera and the other because I took two shots of the same thing. And yeah, I know, I'm a little bit disappointed too. You, you hear a lot of people, myself included, with digital cameras complaining that the camera doesn't focus on what you want. <laughs> what I love about this. <laughs> is it's all your fault. The camera does exactly what you tell it to. There's no leeway. It doesn't have a mind of its own, a processor that's like, oh, I've got this better than you, even though I can't actually see or think for myself. With this, all the mistakes are on you. What comes out of the camera is this really unique and almost timeless look. As I looked at some of the photos that I took literally the last month with this camera, I, I went, oh gosh, they feel like they're 30, 40 years old. Just the way that they adapt the colors, the way the film kind of absorbs in the light, they're just really beautiful. My final point is that this camera, it's pretty much unbreakable. I mean, it's just, it's just really, really great. The, the, the photos that come out of it are really good. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust, <laughs> myself to this if I were doing any sort of professional shoot or any shoot that depended on the participation of others because there's so many finicky things that you've got to just get right and it takes time. The beautiful thing about this camera is it just slows you down enough to enjoy photography more. So that's why I'd invite you to get one. You know what the best use of these is? In my humble and limited recommendation would be for documenting life. I, I literally had it sitting on the kitchen bench and you'd see something take place or see something happen and you just, you grab it and you'd flick open the, the le I live with the lens cap off. Um, and you go up and you'd, you'd make it shot right. And you'd have it focused in and everything would be just right. And you go like this, you know, you go. Well, you, except it didn't do that, right? It, yeah, you had to lock it back in. So you always, you just need to wind it on before you do it weird things it doesn't happen in digital world does it no i reckon you can pick these up nowadays for a hundred bucks this is from a friend but the ones i've looked around the cheaper ones say hasn't been checked before what's well, not to check right um anyway it's worth getting one if you want to have a little bit of fun the processing costs about 14 bucks 
the film costs about seven bucks. It's a good little project to learn more about photography, to enjoy more, to kind of revisit the art of it. If you're pondering film photography, what's all that about? I'd encourage you to um, give it a go, get into it. Leads me to a very important question that I think you will be asking, which I think I need to have the integrity to, to answer. And obviously the question is, am I going to change from my digital gear to a film camera? And the answer is yes. <laughs> is that, the answer is not yes. Definitely not. No, never. I don't get why people do it for professional shoots. It doesn't make any sense to me. But it is fun. You do learn a heap. And I would encourage you to give it a go. If you like this little experiment and challenge that I took on, if you like the content on my channel, please subscribe. Please hit the bell button. If you whack that bell button, it helps the logarithm, the logarithm, the logarithm, the logarithm. Doesn't make any sense to me. Spread your videos further to help more people, right? Because it'd just be cool if more people could gain from the things I've gained from in my past and enjoy photography more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.